Hey guys, and welcome to my review of the Vitus E Summit. Uh, I wanted to give you my thoughts about the bike, kind of first impressions. I've had the bike around about two weeks, and I kind of, uh, I kind of got to know it by riding it on a variety of different stuff, uh, trail, some jump lines, and I kind of wanted to give you my thoughts about it in case you're looking at one of these bikes uh, and have any questions. So I picked this bike up in a size large. I'm around about six foot. Uh, and that's a really good size for me. Typically I'll buy bikes in the large, uh, being that height, and, and that's kind of what I'm used to, so that kind of feels right for me. The reach feels kind of spot on where I'd want to be. With e-bikes, I think they do kind of bring the saddle position a little bit forward, just to help with kind of putting power down on climbs, but I'm generally happy with the setup there. So the Vita C Summit does come with the Shimano EP8 motor, when I had a look online, I was a little bit concerned because a lot of the reviews were saying that these uh, motors put out the least amount of torque. And I kind of thought, oh God, is that going to be a problem for me? I've had absolutely no problems with the motor at all. I weigh around about 76 kilos. And I guess the weight of the ride is going to make a significant impact on whether you want a, a motor that's producing more torque or not. I'm not limited by the motor at all. In boost mode, I can climb pretty much anything I want that I can put power down to. Uh, the, yeah, the, um, the, the motor doesn't seem to be a limiting factor for me. Battery wise, really happy. My only gripe about the battery is it does take quite a long time to charge. So you're looking around about a seven hour charge time, but it does give you plenty of range. I haven't drained a whole battery yet. I get tired way before the battery does. So uh, that hopefully is gonna keep me out on the door. It will keep you out on the trails for plenty of time. In terms of the weight of the bike, obviously e-bikes are going to be heavier than your traditional bike and that was another concern for me, how is it going to feel? I've been riding mountain bikes a long time and this kind of feels a little bit like old school downhill bikes. You're in a similar kind of weight range to that, 20 plus kilos uh, of bike. I know we're spoilt nowadays with carbon fiber, carbon fiber sort of downhill bikes and enduro bikes uh, and then switching to an alley uh, e-bike you do think crikey this is heavy but when you're actually on the trail I barely notice it uh, so yeah I, I'm really pleased it seems to hide its weight really nicely if anything the weight I actually really like it seems to track really nicely and I find it really reassuring when I'm jumping the bike as well it seems to be really stable in the air so that's kind of a, a bit of a bonus I feel more confident jumping this bike than I do my enduro bike Partly because it's running kind of front and rear air suspension, I find that really nice for jumping. It gives you plenty of pop and it also means you can adjust the suspension just to how you like it. Uh, and that's a real big benefit for air suspension in my opinion. With regards to the suspension, it comes with RockShox front and rear. So in terms of suspension, it comes with the RockShox Deluxe Select on the rear and the Zeb up front. They've been really good to be fair. I'm really happy with them. One thing I really like is the stiffness that you get from the Zeb. And by stiffness, I mean kind of the flex in it. Uh, it seems to have very little flex and then the frame as well uh, seems to have very little flex in it as well. So it's really reassuring in corners uh, and jumps. Uh, yeah, that's, well, that's one thing I really like. I'm used to Fox suspension and that's one of the reasons I like kind of Fox downhill forks and things like that. This kind of lack of flex in the front end uh, and the kind of Z recreates that. So really happy with that. No complaints at all about suspension. My only gripe being actually, uh, it was leaking a little bit of oil to start off with. I did contact chain reactions and they said that's completely normal for these uh, shocks. Uh, just to keep an eye on it, wipe it clean. After a few rides, it should settle down. It has been getting better, uh, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, and so yeah, that's something to keep an eye on if you do get one of these. In terms of kind of display at the front here, again, it's got the Shimano display. Really happy with the display. It's really clear. It's got the information I want to see, and that's going to be kind of what mode I'm in, whether it be off, eco, trail mode, which is what I kind of leave it in most of the time, or boost mode if you kind of need that little bit of a, an extra hand up a really steep hill. It gives you battery life. It gives you the kind of speed you're doing. There's lots of other features on there, like your distance traveled. It's got an odometer, a range. It gives you your cadence and things like that. I generally leave it on the speed setting, so I know kind of when the motor is about to stop uh, providing torque, which is around about 25 kilometers an hour. 
tire and wheel combinations. It comes with a 27.5 in the rear and it comes with a 29er up front. So it's a mullet setup. It comes with Max's front and rear. So you're running a high roller two in the rear and you're running a, uh, an Asagai in the front. Yeah, really nice setup. I generally run Maxxis uh, tires if at all possible. Uh, and if I generally buy a set of tires, I'll often run a high roller and a minion. So this is really close to my, what setup I generally go for. Uh, I've been really happy with them. It comes with the double down casing. It does also come with the valves if you want to swap to tubeless. I haven't done that yet. It's something I probably will get round to. Uh, it's just a bit of a tedious job. And so I've been putting it off a little bit. Last thing I kind of mention, well, two things I'll mention actually. Number one, the bottle cage mounting is a bit of a pain. Uh, I suspect kind of a side exiting bottle cage would be the best. I'm running a 600 mil and you kind of just have to squeeze it out the top here, which you can do. Uh, a little bit annoying, but I'm coming from a Newt Proof Mega where it used to mount here uh, and uh, that's way worse. So this is actually an upgrade for me. <laughs> and then finally, pedals. It comes with kind of just bog standard plastic pedals. If you don't have a set of pedals ready to go, I would buy a set of pedals with the bike. Uh, just the last thing you want to do is get the bike, want to go out and ride, and then have to ride on those pedals. Uh, whether you run clipped or flats, just buy yourself a nice set of pedals or have a nice set of pedals ready so you can go and enjoy the bike straight away. Hope you guys found that helpful. Any questions, find them in the comments. I do mess around to them. Take it steady, guys. Thank you.